Thank you for taking the time to listen or watch to the presentation of our research paper, Regulating Responsibility. I'm Rob Comer from KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, Sweden, and I'm recording this on behalf of myself and my colleague Chiara Rosito at Stockholm University. This research has been funded by the Camproud Family Foundation. The research began as an exploration at the nexus of sustainability, innovation and regulation. We've seen lots of discussion in the HCI community on various combinations of these concepts, whether it's calls for greater engagement with policymakers across HCI, arguments for moving away from individual behaviours to stronger regulation within sustainable HCI, or the growing concerns about labour rights and social justice outcomes in an era of digitization, platformization, and automation. Our study sits in the middle of these, with the central question being on how we can think of responsibility for the environment when it is co-produced among individuals, municipalities, and technology companies. The research responds to calls to engage with feminist ecological perspectives on the work of environmental stewardship, to account for the complex systems which produce the values and practices with which we perform care for the environment. We do so through a review of legal documents arising in the case of Stockholm Municipality versus TipTap. TipTap is a technology company that, in addition to other services, delivers an online platform for individuals to advertise waste they want removed and disposed of. In December 2017, Stockholm Municipality raised a legal case against TipTap, seeking both that they register as a waste management company and that they cease operation of their waste management business. I won't have time to cover all of the findings from the paper, so please do check it out for more detail. In summary, we found that TipTap was able to shift its definition of its practice and values to both suit the definition of waste management and environmental care, and at the same time to avoid being called a waste management company. We see how this manoeuvring draws on a narrative of how infrastructure and practices, including technology and regulation, of environmental protection are produced over time but also how the narrative of technology can cherry-pick conditions to suit its argument. Technologies and innovation, of course, exist within systems, but narratives of, in of innovation presented in the case, including from the company itself and from political representatives of Stockholm Stad, want to ignore that. At the same time, while we find responsibility for environmental care as something that is held individually, it is also something that can be monopolised. And while it seems that such responsibility is tied to the physical production of waste and care for the environment, the actual, the actual work of waste management is abstracted. It is even argued that it could be done by an algorithm. Finally, we have to reiterate also for ourselves that if we had been designing a technology to support waste disposal in Sweden at the time of this case, we might well have been contravening the law. This is a reminder that not only do we need better tools to engage with the law, but that our own green values do not equate to environmentally sustainable practices. So let's jump into the legal case. The foundation for the case arises from different interpretations of the Swedish law on environmental protection, the environmental code or miljöbolk in Swedish. Chapter 15 of the code defines waste as any substance or object the holder gets rid of or intends to or is obliged to get rid of. This definition is quickly accepted by both parties and is even used to protect the branch of tip-top service that deals in the circular economy. The real disagreement it arises around the definition of what it means to do waste management. TipTap's contention to the law and to the municipalities' request to register as a waste management company echoes one we have heard in cases of other platform services, such as Airbnb and Uber. TipTap argues that it is an IT company and it delivers an advertising platform. It argues it is only passively engaged in waste management and does not physically come into contact with any waste. Although the environmental code seen here already describes this as part of what is waste management, TipTap argues that its platform is in fact only connecting individuals and it is not about waste itself. TipTap considered their service as an IT company to be comparable to many other services, such as Blockit in Sweden or eBay, and even Facebook, even if those services do not speci specialise in waste management. They go as far as suggesting that a ban on TipTap could mean a ban on all social media, where any part of social media which connects individuals could end up relating to waste management. TipTap's argument that it, as an IT company, is only passively involved in waste management draws into question its legal responsibility for environmental protection. 
the wording in the Swedish law defining a waste broker seems to suggest a more active involvement, one that is both affective and practice-based, to take care. However, while the municipality argues elsewhere that the responsibility, and, eff- and particularly the effective component, is diminished when responsibility is delegated, they strongly argue for the possibility for waste management and the responsibility attached to it to be abstracted. They do so in a number of ways, including comparing the Swedish law to the English and French versions of the EU law on which it is based. In the Swedish version, the word ombasoyer, meaning to take care of, implies an active and physical participation. In contrast, the English, organize, and French, Angers, suggest something different, something which allows for the care work and responsibility to be mediated. The municipality goes as far as suggesting that in under this interpretation, even an algorithm could conduct waste management practices. One final point that's important to stress is the evident gap in capability that digitalization of public services highlights. Much of the municipality's legal case against TipTap is based on data that TipTap provided on the people who pick up waste and bring it to recycling centres, the so-called waste transporters. At the same time, in trying to argue that TipTap should be banned, the municipality highlights its legal requirement to monitor all waste management practices and the practical impossibility of doing so. This is despite the fact that they are using such data in the legal case against TipTap. So what does this all mean? At its core, we find the legal case to be a study in what responsibility means at the nexus of sustainability, regulation and innovation. We see that as designers of technology and the technologies that we design to mediate environmental care are implicated in this doing of care work. We are not only passively handing over technologies to others. More broadly, we note that technology and ID companies are not only doing the abstracted work of software development, and we need greater engagement in the consequences and possible regulation of what that means. It is important to note that law is not a binary of legal and illegal, and in fact, although TipTap was banned from operating, that ban was never enforced. We see here an opportunity for HCI and technology designers to engage in a bi-directional exchange with what law means and can be. We argue that to do so, HCI researchers and designers need better tools to engage with the law and understand the current and historical production of environmental practices, including regulation and technology innovation.